With the sun slowly setting and 60 minutes left until closing, it can only mean one thing. Another trip to Menard's attic to rediscover the train section upstairs. There are still a few things that I haven't looked at very closely, so now's my chance. Most of my trains or accessories are older or used and come mainly from train shows or swap meets with an occasional eBay purchase thrown in, but I rarely buy anything that's brand new. I do like looking at new stuff though, and Menards has a pretty good selection, especially online. These shelves are not fully stocked right now, but the 11% rebate does make it pretty tempting to buy something. The Cripple Creek Crossing Switch Tower is one of the few Menards buildings that has been weathered at the factory. The walls and siding have a dirty appearance, which I guess is due to the coal dust and soot from passing steam locomotives. It's definitely a step above the old Plasticville switch towers from 50 years ago. The signage is crisp and clear. There are multiple LEDs for lighting, four pre-painted figures, and even pull-down shades at different lengths in the windows. The Cripple Creek Water Tower is one of the more affordable O-gauge structures from Menards. It's not cheap in quality, but it is lower in price, which I think is due in part to it not having any LED lighting effects. like this a lot, and it's probably because it doesn't have the brightly painted figures that other Menards buildings possess. Most of my locomotives are diesels, but if I had more steam-powered trains, I'd definitely find room for this on my layout. So what's the deal with Menards and Cripple Creek? I was curious, so I looked it up. It's an old mining town to the west of Colorado Springs, whose downtown district is listed as a National Historic Landmark. Large gold deposits were discovered there in the 1800s, but now their primary source of income is tourism. The Schneider Freight Building has 45 separate LEDs, a few workers around the loading dock, as well as an animated forklift that moves out of and back into a loading bay. It's a mechanism that I think is also shared with their FedEx building.
now we get into the bigger models from Menards. The National Power and Light Facility is big. Big enough, in fact, to drive an O-scale train right through. There are removable doors on the left and right sides that would allow for tracks and trains to pass through. There is a growing list of Menards big models with this feature, including the hospital, the police station, the County Suites Hotel, and the Tide Factory. And I bet it's a pretty cool sight to watch freight or passenger cars being pulled through a series of these in a darkened layout room. The LED lighting is a really strong selling point for these buildings. One criticism I have would be the appearance of the red and yellow sliding doors. They look just too much, like the stickers applied to something resembling a Barbie's dream house. The Sacred Heart Hospital also has the drive-through feature for trains and track, plus a helicopter with spinning blades on the rooftop, just like their large police station. I have no trouble with Menards sharing animated mechanisms among their products. They also did it with the moving forklift back at their Schneider's and FedEx buildings. They reuse them when it makes sense, and it's economical which helps keep prices low for us. I've reviewed the Rocket Diner before, but it's still one of my favorite designs, so it's worth a second look. It's such a fun combination to turn a diesel shell into a restaurant. There's a pizza place near me that did the same thing, but with a passenger car instead of an F unit. There are a lot of details, from the people and menus to the truck and the landscaping, this is definitely something you'd want towards the front of your layout, since there's so much to see. Speaking of shared animations among Menard's buildings, here is their most recent take on the spaceship slash alien abduction theme. They've done similar scenes with cows and M&M candies, but this time they've borrowed from H.G. Wells.
The Jeep is continuously raised and lowered from the bottom of the flying saucer, while the tank advances up, then retreats back down the small hillside. On a side note, I'd like a moment to talk about the tank in this scene. I understand that the scale needs to be a little bit off, but the tank itself seems to be a combination of a German Tiger I and a post-war American M47 Patton. The hull has been reimagined as lower and maybe stretched out, but if you look closely, it even has the anti-magnetic Zimmerit coating the German tanks used after 1943 or so. So it's an interesting mixture of tops and bottoms with a Tiger I hull and an M47 turret. Menards uses the same hybrid tank, including the same turret numbers, on a loaded military flat car. This giant billboard is perfect for a hillside, or maybe behind one of the Menard's single-story fast food restaurants. It comes with 26 different decals that tie in with their other buildings and freight cars, or maybe you could even try to make one of your own. None of the Menards models come with the power source, so you need to buy one separately. There are single unit plugs, but this one, with three outlets, may make more sense for multiple buildings. I'm still hoping that Menards will someday offer passenger cars, but until then, they have an impressive variety of freight cars, most of which are under $25. The paint and graphics are pretty much top-notch. The lettering is crisp and clear, and when multiple colors are applied, I've never really noticed any overspray or bleed-through.
really like the way that the deck of each flat car is painted. They actually look like aged wooden boards. I have quite a few Lionel flat cars that I've repainted, but none are as nice as these. I've never actually seen these in stores, but it makes sense that Menards should offer items decorated for themselves. Why not? Lionel has done it for years, so does MTH, or so has MTH, and I really like this white boxcar in particular. If you liked this video in particular, then please press that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Bob's Workshop. Take care.